What killed your interest in a hobby? RS1236 says don't have a specific answer but when someone is new to a hobby and the veterans act like the noob needs to earn their way into the discussion or should already know things. That kills interest quick. Happens in the workplace too. Hypnotic Cat says music production. My god parents pushed me to sell my music as much as possible despite the fact I only had a few years under my belt and wasn't really good at it yet. It stopped being a fun hobby of producing crazy things and uploading them to show my friends and became an unrewarding process of starting a project and scrapping it when I knew it wasn't even worth a dollar. Wrong answer Willie says like most hobbies, the better you get at it, the more expensive it gets. P. Meplum prompts says I was getting into whitewater kayaking and none of my friends or family had any interest in it. For obvious reasons it is dangerous to kayak nor alone. The people involved in kayaking clubs are the widest, most uncomfortable, strange power trip, passive-aggressive people I ever met in my life. And I tried a few different groups. Plenty of nice people, but the group dynamics were awful. I guess it wasn't meant to be. Fell in a barbecue says the hierarchy associated within the community. There are weird power trips in all groups. Song Grady one says I burned out on GTA Online because of a friend that was obsessed with it. I'd get game invites if I was playing something else or watching Netflix. If we did play he'd spend up to an hour trying to exploit glitches to get more money, and maybe two or three missions afterward. I play video games to relax in my off time, and he turned it into a second job. I ended up getting a PS4 and promptly refused to get PlayStation Plus to avoid online entirely. Pinacorny says I wanted to invest my time in archery but the expense that was put into it was too high. I had to give it up. Living Life 2019 says I was really into comics growing up, probably 15 years or so. Then they started constantly restarting the universe, restarting the title, and doing major events that required massive tie-ins. It just got to the point where you could not just read a fluid, consistent story about a character or team for longer than like four months. Artmaker says I used to make cheese and cured meats, like cheddar and prosciutto etc. I have a basement cheese cave, a curing chamber, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, temp controls, all of that. I used to enjoy making it, aging it for months, then sharing at a big dinner party or something. Then people started, like expecting me to make it, and would get pouty if I didn't share. Hey, sorry, that small gouda is 5 in ingredients and 9 months aging, I'm not giving it away, I want to save it for myself this time. Then someone close to me said I could give them the homemade stuff and go buy my own cheese from the store if I wanted more for myself. And, I'm out. All the fun and joy of the process is gone so I've found new hobbies that are 100% mine alone. Burns Joint says I used to do community theater in a small town. Just a lark really, but there was some real talent. A group if us would put together a show every couple of months, often well received by audience members. Soon some of the actors and crew started to think they were something really special. Egos grew out of control. There was talk of my art, as an actor. People took themselves way too seriously. Took all the fun out of the whole thing. DQ9 says when I was younger I was super into Magic the Gathering. Never went to any tournaments or anything, just played with my friends. Once one of my friends started stealing cards and others started arguing about rules and how certain cards' abilities were supposed to be played it really killed it for me. Cal Mabutspil says I was five years into learning French when I learned the French word for yogurt. It's yayoit, which made my brain tell itself the joke that it sounds like saying yogurt with yogurt in your mouth. Then it occurred to me that all French just sounds like you're speaking any other language with yogurt in your mouth, and I never learned another French thing again. Cut is not cool says theater. I used to love musicals like Heather's, Dear Evan Hansen, Hamilton, Act but the community is truly insane. Especially the Hamilton community. It's incredibly toxic, and many of my friends left me because they wanted better theater friends. Gunch Bandit says World of Tanks. The producer of the game. Wargaming, started selling pay-to-win tanks that basically ruined the whole grinding experience part of the game for the regular tanks. Why use the regular ones when you can just use the op pay-to-win tanks and get better rewards? 
When everyone started using those tanks I quickly lost interest. They also ruined, nerfed, an entire branch of tanks that I enjoyed playing. MRBENTER1987 says getting good at a hobby that it starts to make you some side money, then it turns into a job and it's not fun anymore. Grumpy Kitten 514 says it's not a hobby, but I wish it was for me coding. I used to want to learn to code, thinking wow I'd love to code and make cool video games and make 10 figures as a kid and as I got older. I never got into coding because I learned that I didn't want to do it as a job. Deadlines and timelines and lines of codes for things I may or may not like. And then fixing the codes and all of the time it would take to do all of this kind of killed it for me and I might pursue small coding later. Like Python for Raspberry systems or something. But I will never turn my hobby into a job. Catherine Pessina says meeting fellow hobbyists. Zalegui says I flew RC planes for over 45 years. I still have my first radio, craft. I just turned 80 and just lost my enthusiasm for flying anymore. Sad. Underscore Albinoni underscore says I am a knitter, expert enough to create high fashion clothing that use what killed it colon chunky oversized sweater o n a n t h r o p o l o g i e dot com. 50.00 yarn for chunky oversized sweater. 50.00 I only work with finely tuned, curated yarns. So my hobby is expensive that can't afford to knit anymore. Really when Sethron says used to love baking. Then I moved to a high altitude. You can bake the same at a high altitude as you do at a low one. All my recipes that I had spent years perfecting were suddenly terrible. I would try to find high altitude recipes online. But they were always still for a few thousand feet lower than I was. So even on specifically high altitude recipes I have to adjust for the altitude. And even with a billion guides I just never was able to get the hang of it. It was worse than starting over from scratch. Because at least when I first started I could follow a damn recipe. So I just quit. Maybe I'll get back into it whenever AI move back closer to sea level. John Adson says I used to collect obsolete paper currency, including Confederate money. But every collector of Confederate money that I met was a racist who seemed to be collecting the money in hopes that the Confederacy would rise again. Kind of turned me off from that part of the hobby. Begarmanthiev says I used to draw, used to be pretty damn good at it, too. That was... Until mom kept pressuring me to get into tattooing and years of belittling the only talent I've got. Every drawing became selling me a job and I wasn't buying it. Another reason was that I always used references. I felt like these drawings weren't mine anymore. I'm so done and don't know what to do. I am too depressed to even write shit down anymore. Ferocity says I'd played guitar for years as a teen. But between lack of accessibility to formal education and a bunch of shit from my friends who called it a white girl hobby I just lost interest. It's a shame no one told me about Sister Rosetta Thought back then, I feel I might have been inspired to keep at it knowing that a black woman basically invented playing electric guitar. Bonpi21 says horse riding. Got a little job at the stables I rode at every Sunday and in exchange for mucking out fields for six hours I got one lesson. I was maybe ten years old. Worked me so hard in the heat of the summer. I just lost interest after about three months which is sad as I rode for years up until that point. I wasn't afraid of hard work, but I worked alone with very little reward. Kami Bob Dole says pretty much every hobby, the community. Like, you find something that's fun to do, and you find other people who like that thing too, and it's great. But after a while it starts to congeal for lack of a better word, and there start to be a lot of unwritten rules that define an in-group and an out-group and the right way to enjoy the activity. And then somebody comes up with a way to extract money from enthusiasts and it just keeps going downhill from there after a while. It seems like every new hobby becomes an elaborate performative activity where people buy the right things and do the activity in a particular way for the purpose of being seen by other people, to demonstrate to them that you're part of the in-group. 
the actual activity around which the hobby is based becomes secondary and of course it's an endless feedback loop that keeps escalating as more people get into the in group and the people who are already there raise the stakes to maintain the exclusivity. Cascus as all water fish tank. Godly expense. Wabiger says years ago I said goodbye to Warhammer 40k when I got a girlfriend. It was a good trade ultimately. Having the girlfriend actually saved me boatloads of money. IIAI3 says I was getting really into drawing until my OCD decided if I didn't draw everything perfectly I was going to die. Lonely Lockley says latest World of Warcraft expansion was fine for a few weeks, but... Well... 10 years is enough I guess. The Lost Skeleton says I used to enjoy streaming video games, but the overwhelming majority of people who showed up in my chat were clingy and creepy, or else they were obnoxious kids whose mere presence in my 18 plus chat violated the mixer twos. I'm not looking for love, and I'm not a babysitter, I'm just someone who enjoys talking about games with other adults. The kind of people who showed up in my chat over several months did not share that same sentiment and it got exhausting, so I don't do it anymore and now, happy story time. Depression and fear of showing people what I write robbed me of my passion for creative writing for over a decade. A couple of months ago, the guy who runs my Dungeons and Dragons game asked me for help doing some writing for other campaigns he's running. I said yes, one thing led to another, and now I regularly write for him and am also writing my own adventure. His players enjoy my content. It's given me a little bit of my life back, and I'm having a blast. BM Haiku says drone flying. Picked up a small drone with an onboard camera, had a great time getting beautiful landscape photos. Then, the regulations came. Can't fly near people, can't fly in parks, can't fly within miles of any runway, active or not. Must call local airport before flying, can't fly over 400 feet. It's just not worth the trouble. Felix says when I was a kid I used to take board diving lessons. One day I failed my dive and I felt flat from the 3 meters board and I got scared of jumping again so I just stopped taking diving lessons. I used to love going at the pool to take those lessons so I'm kinda mad that I stopped only because I was scared, but whatever I was a dumb kid. Blue Eyes White Guy says when I moved away I lost all interest in Magic the Gathering I used to play it with all my friends but once I moved to my new area. The MTG community out here were a huge bunch of elitist assholes so I just dropped it. I only play as Rust Lord says the feeling of not improving ruined a few hobbies for me. That and me getting too competitive. Contemptuous Melon says used to love Transformers. So much I even enjoyed ripping it. But then the wit fetish side of the community showed itself and tumbleriness. Observing a self-proclaimed sexy bumblebee hooking up with 20 plus other Transformers is enough to make anyone cringe never again. Tiny But Toucher says after years and years of sewing gifts for children in my family and friends kids, I finally launched an Etsy, then transitioned into IT and my own website. It was stressful, customers were frustrating, Custom orders were fun but could be problematic. Stock and supplies filled up our second bedroom in a small house. I had to be on my phone computer IG whenever I wasn't sewing. Collaborations were flaky. It wasn't worth the stress and long hours to make very little after an entire year plus of work. Shut my shop down, gave most of my leftover stock away. TL Doctor turned my hobby into a business. Hated it. The Confident Bitch says always loved to cook when I was younger and I even considered becoming a chef as a profession, but growing up I began to think that no one would want to eat food that wasn't fancy. Over the years I have been cooking less and less, but I want to begin cooking again. And, side story, when I was in elementary school we had career day. The day you came to school dressed as what you wanted to be when you grew up, so I went as a chef and was constantly made fun of. This may be the first of many reasons as to why I gave up my chef dream. Mantis Shrimp 42 says the law of diminishing returns. You can only get so good before you spend months on a tiny improvement. Heritage Housewife says I joined a very large online forum for people involved in the hobby. It spawned a few name and shame secret forums where people could anonymous ridicule and insult other members. It went way too far. 
people becoming secret agents and befriending other members to gain their trust and confidence, then come back to the secret forum to spill the tea about health issues, family problems, financial difficulties, etc. Posting personal information, photos of houses and cars, photos of kids and spouses to ridicule their appearance, screenshotting pics taken inside houses from social media accounts, zooming in to try and see prescription bottles, and other items in detail to make up theories and lore about targeted members, making up insulting names for members, even contacting employers, neighbors, and other people to try and cause trouble. Occasionally they would have random stuff mailed to a person. It was really disgusting and actually ruined my interest in the hobby. Prapal Palitra 19 says severe depression. Mtips says lack of skill. Clever Cleveland says depression. Amy Jaffrey says parents and teachers. Drunk off night ski says really enjoyed rock climbing, started in a gym and moved outdoors to sport climbing. It's easy to get a bump or bruise here and there, but I've seen some pretty nasty injuries and have met people in the hobby who have actually died. I still enjoy it, but I went from it being a daily workout to something I do very limited. Now having a child really set me back further from wanting to do some of the crazy stuff out there. Lilith 29 says people constantly asking me to do it for them. I'm kind of a jack of all trades every time I find something new it gets soiled. Sing for me you should paint this for me take pictures for me can you make me one? You could be famous. Why aren't you doing that? You could make so much money selling those. No one ever wants to pay. And even the 5% they would have, no. Once something is demanded it becomes a job and not a hobby. The job is repetitive and not fun. Indie Discovery says drumming is a complete pitch logistically. Sarah Ab 87 says power tripping. People who think they are an elitist and in general rude people but it really depends on personal experience and the hobby you are in but I can say these things can ruin a lot of hobbies. Thankfully there are also a lot of hobbies that can be done yourself and some groups are better than others but it's going to depend on your local group and personal experience. Raz you are Pilu says D and D hard to find a group here in the Vancouver PC area. Claudia Francis Mayer says my Etsy store. It's all fun and games till you have to make seven crocheted unicorns in three days. Insane Knight says injuries. From the age of 8 to 15 I was either playing soccer, tennis, at school or sleeping. Eventually I hurt my knee pretty bad so I had to stop for a good three years. I got into Brazilian JUI Jitsu and enjoyed it but I ended up fucking my shoulder. It's been three years since I've quit any kind of sport and I think I could probably go back but the fear of re-injuring is what is really keeping me from going back that and the Brazilian JUI Jitsu community is really weird. Literally Twisted says I used to do a lot of target shooting but honestly the super pro gun people have ruined firearm ownership and most sport shooting. People used to have enough common sense to know when it was inappropriate to carry a gun but now they've gone so insane that they are even advocating arming teachers currently pretty much anything gun related is filled with morons that think they are some kind of survivalist soldier, they buy crappy but expensive guns and useless accessories and stockpile ammo and supplies. They also delude themselves into thinking that they are capable of stopping a mass shooting if only they were there I'm all for self-defense but anyone not in a war zone that thinks they need to carry a firearm everywhere they go probably shouldn't have one. Dr. Void says blood kept staining my favorite shirts and dry wash started to be over my budget. Few sister says getting an Xbox killed my interest in Legos. Kelly Boylston 57 says I have cut video games more because I was tired of staying in the house all day doing nothing good with my life and I had no friends. So, in my senior year, I tried putting myself out there and by the end of high school, I started socializing more and playing less which was probably the best decision I've made. Rusty the Rat says music theory is beyond my comprehension. Insert Caffeine says crochet versus neck pain. Neck pain 1. Turns out looking down while making repetitive hand and arm movements isn't great for people with herniated discs or arthritis. It apostrophe s really too bad because I love crochet. Maybe I'll ask an occupational therapist about it after my surgery to get the discs replaced. Terran says the community did long-range shooting for a long time. Started out as a passion when I was young. Seeing how precise you'd shoot over longer and longer distances. 
ended up competing in several F-class competitions. However when you end up in the community, and not just the competitive community, everyone is there to win and be the best, not to share thoughts and skills. Just who could get the best groupings or fire the most ammunition in a session. It's all about how expensive your rifle is and if your ammunition were exactly 0.308 and 155 grains. Everything else was apparently trash. Had a guy come up to me once, asking how many shots I've taken today, and calling me a rookie because he'd been there from 11am and had fired about 180 rounds, yet still had worse groupings than me. I just said congratulations, you wasted 250 bucks I just wanted to explore and extend my abilities as a shooter. I loved the calculations of a shot and I always dreamed of breaching the 2k barrier, but ended before that happened. Yellow Pickle 23 says I'm into guns. I like guns. I like going to the indoor range in my town from time to time. But fuck, is the fan base toxic? Nothing is casual with guns. Everything is G-U-N-G ho. It's so serious and big guy, dude bro tough. I just want to shoot some targets safely, obviously, and look at other guns. Big Kentucky Rhino says the MLP community. I like the show but I would never actually say I watch it because of the strange fandom. Fafaki Frank Reynold says any video game I like gets played in cringe ified by children. April Marina says I was a knitter. Like, pretty good, taught knitting, etc. It was something my mom and I shared. My mom died last June and I haven't picked up my needles since. No desire at all. I've been challenged to pick up needles and cast on, see how it goes. I can't, just can't force myself. I don't know if it will come back. Tech Knight 101 says social media. Perfect says used to love playing soccer a lot. I even had the hope and believed I really could fulfill my dream to become a soccer player and follow my father's footsteps. Dominated at the sport and continuously won gold medals since primary school once in secondary school, I got outcasted terribly because here in my country, Singapore, Soccer is widely dominated by another race, I'm Chinese. Lost interest since then and got demoralized since I, I got along really well with that race of people during young but people grow up to be cunts. Guess they desperate to get into school team as well. Was glad I still made it to school team for every year, despite coach being biased to his own race too still a pity until now, but I guess it's good since there's no future in soccer in Singapore. Especially totally zero support from government despite being a first world country. The government only brainlessly spoke about a goal few years back of qualifying for World Cup by 2020 or something but now can't even do well just in Southeast Asia itself. Players join local football clubs through connections and national team being run by reputable formal player but got his sons into the national team just because it's his sons lol talk about democracy especially in a first world well known country and established government at least now I'm in a correct career direction that earns big bucks which is what this country is all about. Burgermeister says lol is in anim. I don't have any desire to watch Oni San's internal battle with his urge to pound his 12 year old sister's ass. Kiki underscore K2 says MRX know it all teachers used to have interest in playing guitar, but when I actually found a teacher he was all like playing guitar is not easy, it needs blood sweat and tears, your fingers will hurt and even might bleed, don't you think it's easy, blah blah like I get it, it needs dedication but man you are teaching me how to play an instrument, not getting me ready for war, I'm here to have fun, was.